two traders, two visions, two objectives, one chart, the bottom line. Welcome back, everybody, to The Bottom Line on this wonderful Friday. I am Paul Sampson, a.k.a. Pauly Profits, with a whopping six wins, baby. Six wins on the Bullish or Bear segment. We've got another great one coming yeah. to you later. But uh, your boy over here, one more, and I'm goaded up there with Brady. So I don't know what I'm going to have to do, but I do think that Ben might have me this week. Um, yeah, that meta <laughs> chart, man, the market's just ripped. Yeah. It was, I mean, it came back in to that level. You just happened to, it just went up that one day. And filled you, and I was like, "All right, well, that was this is next week." Well, last week was Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the one where we were going to six. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we're looking for sixty nine. We're gonna come down, you guys. For me, fifty nine for you. That's I mean, right. It's came on, up. So. It's on its way down. Yeah, right. It'll, it'll hit for sure. So, yeah, we got another great uh, episode here for that's you, right. folks. Uh, a little bit of a holiday off day for the stock market today. So the crypto market's still open. We had a little bit of news uh, from the Fed. Uh, all kinds of cool, interesting stuff. It's a little weird. It's the end of the quarter. It's the end of the week. It's the end of the month. Uh, so it's just uh, you know a good a good variety of things that are all kind of compiling in. Yeah. Uh, that I think is just going to make maybe catapult for a, a really explosive week next week. Just don't know how. And we don't know which direction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. How is the market going to take the the Fed announcement from today? Yep. Right. Or the uh, the economic news. Yep. And so on top of that, just being a new quarter. Oh, new it, quarter. It's just always a, a good you know influx of things that come onto it, but. We're going to jump right on into it. Ben, what do we have going on? All right, so market, sir? the first thing that we have on the charts is Estee Lauder. So I know that I'm I'm bearish in the overall markets. However, there still are some plays that we can go along with. I have Estee Lauder. You've got this huge parallel channel right here. So you've got your lows from November. It hit right here and it pierced right here. Connect this high right here. And you've got this brilliant, beautiful parallel channel. I see what you or, did there with the beauty. Yeah, the Estee Lauder. Estee, oh, you know, I didn't do that. How you doing? That is usually my thing. Uh -huh. but, yeah, okay. Not in one. <laughs> show, show me the restore. All right, you're going to have some restore right in this area. So you've got this gap fill right here. It kissed it barely, pulled back. But you notice that around this level, you've also got the midline of this parallel channel. And usually when you hit a midline of a parallel channel, that is going to act as a lot of um, resistance in this case because it's coming up to the middle of it. If it was on the way down, it would be support. But in this case, it is resistance. I mean, yeah, resistance. Resport. Resport. All right. So it's going to... So what I would think is this is going to come down. It might fill this gap. might actually come back down, test this trend line again, and then... I think ultimately it's going to come up to about the $180 mark. Um, for Estee Lauder, that's actually not a huge move. This stock is uh, kind of on the thinner side, so it can really move. So that's what I have for you guys. And it will get a little bit of um, resistance at this little bit higher area. But ultimately, I think that's your upside target around the, the top of the parallel channel. And then if you wanted to, you could actually short that maybe come down to the center line again where it will be support. So that's what I have on Estee Lauder. What do you got? I like it, man. I like it. Um, all right, so I'm going to take a look at Bitcoin uh, and a little bit. So this was actually the bullish or bear case last week. Uh, I was looking, we were actually trading right about this level down here. If you can see it, it was around that 63,000, a little bit lower here off to the left. And I was targeting back up to the previous all-time high. You know, at the time we had a untapped uh, weekly level of, res of resistance up here. We obviously had the all-time high. We had a local gold pocket from the 74K high to that local low down there. A lot of things kind of lined up in that region. And for me, looking at this now, you know, as we're really holding that previous all-time high, it's really that line in the sand. Granted, we're still really range-bound on it at the same time. Uh, what I mean by that is you see like these little dips that are still happening around it, but we still do really just hold that as support. For, for the time being, uh, because it's the end of the quarter, because it's the end of the month even, uh, this is actually a really important close for Bitcoin, and especially as the weekly closes as well. So, so far, we've not closed the weekly candle above the 2021 $69,000 high. And just when looking at even short term, right, we got we look for the closes on a, on a, on a four-hour candle to start looking for an, an additional trend to the upside or the downside. The same thing can be said on the higher time frame. And we're about to close a, a weekly, potentially, if we close it above this, uh, above that level, which indicate more upside. Uh, if that happens as well, you're going to be looking at a quarterly candle closing above that previous high, a monthly, all the things, right? That, that'll actually be the highest uh, monthly candle ever closed for Bitcoin. Okay. 
if we close it above that 69,200, give or take. And it's chopping, man. It's, it's chopping it's right chopping, at that yeah. level. And um, as far as any kind of short term things, I, you know, for me, I have these about five areas on the chart here. The daily open is not, you know, too significant uh, at the moment. Going past today, this is just a day tradable area, uh, which obviously came in really nicely, right? We came down, we back tested it, and then basically down we went. Uh, other than that, though, if we do lose this just on a little bit of more of a ranging effort here, we do have a naked point of control from, uh, I think that was like earlier on this week. And then we also have a weekly naked point of control from last week. Uh, so those are some key levels. I bring that up because we could still just kind of come back down to these areas and, and still continue onward and upward if that's the case. Wouldn't be anything but more so just another, you know, higher low. Uh, and then it would be very technical to come down to those levels. It would really freak people out. Bitcoin is one of those just... Everyone gets so hyper focused on if we're living above the previous all time high or below the all time high. It's like it's like one or the other, like a switch, uh, uh, like a switch gets flipped. And um, so for right now, everybody's feeling probably pretty comfortable. If we get all those closures, like I said over the weekend, you know, that's probably going to signal everybody like, oh, it's up only. So even into next week, even if we close, I'm <laughs> get rid of some of these lines here. Even if we close above here, uh, a, a little drop down in these areas and then a reclaim again would not be anything in the short term. So I just really wanted to hammer on these levels right here. Obviously we'll adjust and, and kind of adapt as we go if we continue lower. I like this daily level up here back at like 73,151. I did want to highlight that so far we've got all these highs coming in here, uh, pretty much staying intact. So if we were to see a move like this, even just from where we are here, you know, this would come up and sweep the highs, you know, potentially you get all this whipsaw action. And I think we're kind of just in, in, in play for that at the moment. It's just everybody's kind of piling in not knowing what to do. So it's like people are going short, people are going long, people, you know, it's like all at the highs right now. So um, just a time to really be patient, kind of take a step back, strategize a little bit, see how things kind of unfold. Uh, but for me as a trader, you know, this was a really good one. Yeah, my favorite trade, right? We took the high and then just dumped it right there. We came back in, didn't actually come up to the high here, but, you know, just been, pretty much just been ranging around, hitting that as support. Uh, so for me, Bitcoin's just kind of range bound. Um, looking at, you know, between 65 and 73 at the moment. Okay. So typically, when you expect a stock to do something, it generally does what you expect it to do, right? So if everybody's expecting the ho the high to close at above that all time high, and they expect it to go up, it's a, almost a guarantee that it's going to go up, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for me, that's that's what I I'm almost visioning that, right? Sure. We actually do close above, get everybody really excited. Yeah. Um, and, and that will be you know good in the in the longer term, but like you know in the short term, if we even pulled back you know, 20%, you know, like that can happen in the next couple of weeks here. And then to say the month closes after that back above that high, you know, in the higher time frame, it won't even, it'll look like a blip. But in the interim, yeah, I mean, closing above these regions would be great. It's going to indicate like more upside overall. But for me, I'm still looking a little bit more cautiously as we come down into some, some better entry areas. Sure. Um, paying attention for the, you know, the altcoins as well. But uh, yeah, definitely one of those things, right? When everybody's expecting that, it's it's probably not going to give us just the exact uh, oh, what that, they want. That was kind of the sarcasm, right? Right. It's, a lot of people think that, Oh, well, if it does this, it's definitely going to do this, right? Because right. we're holding around 70. We got up to 73. So now I, I hear people talking, it's definitely going to 100,000, right? right? So, you know, where it lands so it, at it, the $80,000 mark. And, and that's the really, target. really good. And I, I do think it'll go to 80. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, like in the, when we're getting this much range bound activity, it's like, so every moment of this, you know, market, somebody's entering, right? Generally, they're entering in the middle area because it's like they're too scared down here. They're too scared up here, right? You get like, I can't short it. Oh, I can't long it. Like, but when it gets like kind of consolidated, this is where people enter. Stop loss above, stop loss below. And that's just all we're doing right now. Chopping them out, chopping them out. And if we close above that, everybody's excited. It's like, oh, guaranteed it's going to 100. I've been guaranteed. Waiting. I've been yeah. waiting to buy in. I'm jumping 100%. in. Say we push up, got a nice technical target here. We clear all the highs and make it look like, oh, it's you know continuing up. And once again, I'm not saying it has to happen like this, but it's very common that we see something like that. We see an, a huge drop back down, take out some of these technical levels, and then you come back up. It's just a really range bound and, uh, you know, essentially just choppy at the moment. Like if you're not like you know, open to those uh, areas and like really strategize in that region, it's, it can be tough. It can be, it can be really tough. I mean, shoot, once it hit all time highs, it dropped with 10, 15% in what, 20 minutes or yeah, something like that. Much. I mean, it was, wow. Yeah. Digital gold, right? Yes, sir. All right. Talk to me about Baba. Okay, here we go. Uh, another possible long play for another stock is Alibaba. So what we did here was we've got this. Uh, this is on the weekly chart. So you've got all these lows back here. These are the all-time lows. And we actually took it out back in December of 2023. Kind of got everybody a little bit more bearish on this. 
it popped up and now it's coming back in. So here's what I like to see, right? You get this low right here and then a higher low right here. So with that is you get to start your trend line, right? So this is the start of my trend line. I'm actually gonna go ahead and zoom in on this chart for you guys. No way, I mean, we get the Friday zoom. Yeah, I got the Friday zoom. So that way you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm what I'm seeing in the charts and kind of give you an idea of how to set up your your chart. Okay, so here we go. So here was that, that low that I was talking about and here was that higher low. So this gives you a really good entry point or um, at least a support line. So if Alibaba does come back down to this support line, then you're gonna have more upside. You do have this trend line here that it's hitting up against, but because this is such long-term support and you had that big support back in um, its all-time lows, that this is starting to become weaker from what I'm seeing, right? So you've got this longer term downward trend line. Once this breaks up, you're gonna put your stop along this trend line and just allow it to chop along here as long as you can. So my next level of entry, I mean, my, my really, my upside target is 85.96. And that for me is going to be an upside target on Alibaba, uh, especially if you know China keeps printing money or starts printing more money. This is a really good chart setup for me. Nice. Yes, nicely done, man. Um, I'm gonna touch on Litecoin really quickly. And uh, yeah, so Litecoin is basically a, a fork of Bitcoin, which is like almost like if you know a stock was to uh, split off type, type of deal, I guess, in a scenario. But anyways, uh, you know, they, they run off the same network, essentially it's the Lightning Network that like, you know, Litecoin is essentially responsible for. And basically we had this huge range on Litecoin and it dates back even to like 2022. Uh, we got a nice little breakout here. A little back test of support. We're looking for these high time frame averages to basically be claimed. So you want to live above those high time frame averages for more upside. Living below them obviously leads to more downside. And we've seen these, uh, you know, advances up in the chart. And so far we're making a new one right here. And for me, this last little, you know, run up here, we had a nice little push back to this level, a reclaim of the yearly average right here. And so far we've made our way up, taking the highs at the moment. So it's just something to note that very similar to anything else. If we just come up here, kind of sweep that high and start closing below, might get another little pullback. Overall, though, I am targeting uh, for Litecoin to make a jaunt up to about 146, which is a six-month horizontal level and also a yearly horizontal level as well as resistance uh, up at 146. So uh, pretty simple on that. Nice little range, breakout, reclaim, retest the high, and I'm looking for 146 over, you know, potentially weeks uh, coming. All right. That's awesome. All right, so here's the chart. Okay. Oh, baby, come on. Baby, it's the best time of the day. Let's best part of the day. Uh, it's time for bullish or bearish. Drink. And uh, once again, I'm on, I'm on a six peat right here. So I'm wondering if uh, this is going to be the one that takes me out. And I, we've kind of talked about it already. So he gave me a little insight to it. And I think this might be the one that takes me down. <laughs> but, oh, it's so many levels. <laughs> so many levels yeah. on this. I'm glad that I waited until this week to... To pull this one out, but pull the trigger. Yeah, you yeah. Stop me from getting Brady level, man. I'm, I'm. That's right. I'm really upset about that. If that's the case, but uh, we're gonna see. But yeah, what is it? What is the we have or the stock of choice today? Stock of choice is GE. All right. And which right. which stance are you gonna take? I'm gonna take bearish. Okay. So yeah. I'm, I'm forced. I gave you guys two bullish cases. Forced into the you are case. But hey, that ended up working out really well for you last time. It still so. probably work out. Yeah. Not as like no, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you have that 189 at level and the 200. So it's gonna be a big week, man. If we're gonna get explosions, might be either way. So. Oh yeah. Uh, let's check it out. See, let's so here we go. go. Um, I'm gonna go into the charts first. So here are my cases for the GE chart. So you've got this topping tail. Now I like topping tails. Um, so it's at the highs of the charts within the last 180 days. And so for me, the chart on GE is looking very bearish. So what I was looking for is the candle, the body of the candle, to be in the lower 50%. And then the close of the candle must be in the lower 25%. So it was right there, but still slightly lower. And I also want the, the whole candle to be in the top 10% of all the candles. Okay. And so we got that. What happened is you had to close right here, but then um, above it of the, excuse me, you had to close above the top of this, which usually negates it. However, I've been noticing a lot more than it's going to a fib retracement or an extension of about 1.15 of the topping tail. 
So sure enough, that's where this close was, is right at that 1.15%. And then it had a nice reversal candle. It wasn't an, excuse me, an engulfing reversal candle, but it was still a nice reversal candle. So now I think that it's got further downside. I, I think GE has got a lot more downside than this, but my target on GE is going to be 161.36. Now that's a pretty aggressive target for GE because that's a, uh, almost an 8% pullback in a stock like this, but that's where I'm going with. Oh man, you're, you're doing uh, the crypto move. The crypto move. You're going you bigger, go, bigger, going go home. You go bigger, broke, right. broke, baby. You know, all right, so uh, for GE, is, for me as well, just looking at this, right, I'm just, I'm highlighting that once again, we're coming into the end of March. Uh, so for me, I'm looking and I'm viewing at the developing range for the month of March, which is going to close off here soon. So while we're building out the month, this is very dynamic. It does adjust, it shifts up and down. But after the closure of March, this is a set range can be worked off of, traded through. Uh, it's really nice, right? So at this point, unless we get a huge, well, the market's closed, so it's not going to adjust anymore from here. So this is essentially set in stone. Um, one thing I, you know, want to note in confluence with your thought here is that, you know, we deviated from the range here a little bit and pretend that this little fib extension is not here. I just put that on there for my target here in a second, but so that's not really the gold pocket of this area at the moment. And, um, you had a deviation of the range here and we came back in and we're potentially back testing. So just like any other support and resistance, right? We're losing that level. You're coming back into a range. You're back testing it as resistance at the moment. In theory, we should seek out the point of control, which is going to be a naked point of control coming next yeah. week. So that's going to be a high volume target. This is a natural target anyways, once we re-enter the range. Uh, and that does come right into just a little bit of, a little bit over what you're looking at there but you know overall we could you know rotate this range in total even down to the low which comes down right about that's about my target right, right. so you went about 14 15 dollars i pulled a trend based fib extension here i was going to go with something like this but it's only about 4 or 5% i'm going to go bigger go broke too sure well, and i'm going to target a nice 14 dollar move here it looks like uh, about 8 or 9% as well 1618 fib extension up to 187 baby i'm locking it in GE, you're locking in 161. 161.36. And I'm locking in 187. All right, let's here we go. You, let's see if you knock me off my phone. Let's, let's go. I mean, it's about time. <laughs> That's right? it, baby. That's all the time we have for you today yeah. on The Bottom Line. Benny, bring us home. Thank you guys so much uh, for all your comments. Oh, make sure that you post in the comments um, who you vote for or who you think it's going to be correct. Uh, yes. Let me touch on that real quick. Yeah. So it's the end of the month here. So every month what we do is everyone and every time you vote for one of us, Whichever one of us wins throughout that month, all the people that voted for the winner, so anybody, obviously it's probably going to be me this month, it's, uh, <laughs> but uh, everybody that voted for me, we're going to have a, a drawing and we're going to give away a prize here. I don't know what it is exactly quite yet. Right. We have a ton of offer, you know, opportunities, you know, with the wheel maybe. We have a couple of other things coming out. We got a big, you know, some exciting news next week that's going to be popping up. Um, but either way, we're going to be giving away something for you, for all you viewers, for helping and supporting us and choosing the winner over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, definitely be sure to vote for who you think is going to win uh, down in the comments for for that reason, for sure. Yeah, and thank you guys so much. We really enjoy this. Uh, please keep in mind that this is for uh, entertainment or educational purposes only. Unless we're right. Please do your own research uh, when it comes to the charts, and we'll see you next time on The Bottom Line. Have a great weekend, everybody. Happy Easter. Two traders. Two visions. Two objectives. One chart, the bottom line.